So has it, I mean, you sound fairly confident about dealing with the criticisms. Um, after doing some stuff myself, not obviously not the same stuff, for a number, a number of years, probably, probably in a similar position, but early on, I had real trouble dealing with the criticisms that I have to take. Is it, has it been a journey for you, or has it always been that, that confidence? I've never let it really bother me. I mean, I, I know what we're doing, and I know God's green-lighted this thing, and, and, and He's opened up doors that couldn't be opened by man. And um, so, no, I mean, I, I, you know, I, it, it doesn't get me because I, it's not going to change. I mean, very rarely will I, I mean, will I listen to someone that doesn't sign their name on an email or sends a, you know, or spouts off on the radio and has never even met me? You know, I'll listen to people that, that are close to me and, and, and people that are around us will, will call us out on certain things or say, hey, I don't know about this and that, but your your guy that knows nothing about our ministry, but that's just going to make sound bites about it. I mean, you know, I, it would concern me if people in the industry talked bad about us, if people in the secular world talked, you know, bad about us. But that stuff's been pretty positive. It's the church that's killing us sometimes, where it's like I don't think a lot of people get it, and um, I think we've become too we, we've. We become too healthy in our churches. At least we think we're healthy. When in doubt, I don't really think we are. But we cater towards the healthy, not the sick. But that's what got Jesus in trouble when when he didn't go along with that. He's like, man, this isn't what I'm here for. It's good. Now you've been you've been doing this for a while, six years. Um, you would have seen some pretty cool stories of people whose lives have been turned around. Are there any that stand out to you, whether it be in the industry or the consumer? Yeah. The. Uh the, the one that, that kind of sticks out the most, I mean, my friend Donnie, who I met, the first porn show I ever was at, he was a producer, uh, gave us a hard time, and we developed this relationship kind of online, and five years later, he commits his life to the Lord, he walks away from porn, he's in seminary right now, studying to become a pastor, um, and so, like, that was a five-year journey, you know, I mean, for Donnie, it was a nine years into this porn industry, but for me, like, I've seen a life change before my eyes. Um, you know, from a guy who chased after these things, and now all the material possessions are gone, but yet um, he's living this life for the Lord, and um, I don't know, to, to me that keeps me going. Like, to, to see, okay, well, who's next? You know, who's, um, hey, what God, what's God gonna do, you know, next year when, when Donnie's done with school and, and he's a pastor? I mean, the sky's the limit for this guy. And I just feel like, man, to be able to play a small role in that and just to be able to watch and see that and be encouraged by it, it's been neat to see. Talking about people changing, what about someone like uh, Ron Jeremy, who you've been, you did the, the debates, the kind of tour debates, any any change there? Ron is a, is a great guy, I think a guy that, um, isn't fulfilled when it comes to the job that he does, would rather do something else. We talk all the time about, you know, well, you, we couldn't debate each other if I didn't do porn. I'm like, Ron, we could find something else to do, you know, <laughs> besides debate. Uh, but yeah, we, we get to do these debates together. I got one when I go home next week, and um, it, it's been a fun experience because just getting to know him as a person and. Um, he hasn't given his life to the Lord, he hasn't quit porn, he hasn't changed his lifestyle, but um, it's neat. I mean, the, the chance that we have, my family, especially, and myself, to um, to be a part of his life, like, it's it's a good thing uh, to meet people that are close to him, to meet his family, to, for me to be able to share things, and um, it, it's, a, it's a friendship, and, and hopefully he sees something um, in my life, and um, that, that he's drawn to and eventually maybe makes a change, but I don't know, you know, you, you, you got to wonder sometimes, but <laughs> it's, uh, I, I'm just thankful for the, the friendship, really. Yeah. Where, do, where do you see it all going? Have you got any picture of where you would like it to be in five years' time? Yeah, we've got some, uh, we've got some neat things. Um, when's this going out online? Oh, uh, it'll be during the week sometime. Oh, this week? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. we a, we've got some uh, we've got some exciting things around the corner we just haven't shared them with everybody yet so I can't roll it out but uh, I, I think uh, uh, I, I don't 
<laughs> I'm stumped because I, I can't break it out in New Zealand before I, I've shared it with anyone in, in the United States. But it, it's uh, some great things around the corner. We're going to try some things uh, and, and do some things that have never been done, really. Um, um, and yeah, I think continue continue the presence online, continue the presence at, in, amongst the industry shows, and then maybe add a couple elements to it. And um, you know, keep, keep pressing on. Hopefully, we'll get back to New Zealand and, and Australia. Um, I'm sure in in the next year or so. So awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to catch up, Craig. Thanks, man. Go.